Okay, so recently a senator got all fired up because of the Pentagon's progressive hiring policies. Now there's this new position that keeps coming up time and time again, and the position is DEI. So what does DEI stand for? It is diversity, equity, and inclusion. This is becoming an increasingly popular job position, and I was wondering, what does a DEI official even do? What are their duties? What's the responsibilities? So I went on usajobs.gov, I looked up a position that's very similar, DEI, and it's with the Department of Commerce. And what we see is they typically promote a culture of inclusivity, advice on complex and sensitive matters, including recruiting, hiring, retention, promotion, training. And interestingly enough, this position pays up to $183,000 a year. This is a similar type of position that the DOD is trying to advertise with the Pentagon. And that tells me that this is at the GS-15 level. That's the highest level when you're looking at the GS grade chart, GS-15 is the highest level. And by comparison, if you look at some other jobs, look at some people that come into the government as lawyers, you can come in as a GS-12 or a GS-13 and be a lawyer. Same thing with engineers or IT specialists, cybersecurity. All of these professions, they come in at a certain grade. So the main contention is that these were six-figure salaries. And it was viewed by this senator as a waste, right? Like this was not the best use of taxpayer money is to create these high paying positions for DEI. And this Senator, he's a Republican out of the state of Missouri. And his main point is that China, Russia, Iran, other enemies of the United States, they will not be defeated by DEI positions. It's not going to move the needle as far as progress when it comes to addressing some of our main adversaries, which by that statement, by just saying that you're not gonna win a war by focusing on this position, I mean, that's kind of a weak argument in my view because you can't win anything by just one position, right? You can't look at a budget analyst and say, are we gonna win the war because of this one budget analyst? Obviously, you're not gonna win anything with one budget analyst or with a human resource professional. You're not gonna win anything with that. I mean, these are still important to the organization, but they're not gonna move the needle necessarily. He also goes on to say that the money that's being directed in this manner could be used to increase our lethality right are maybe with the the weapon systems the missiles all that stuff we could be investing money in a different capacity or a stronger military instead of diverting dollars towards and i'm paraphrasing here woke policy that's the i believe that's the the term that he used and the reason he gets to weigh in on this issue is because he's a member of the armed services committee now in my experience working for the government also in the military for 20 years it was like a melting pot of different cultures, religions, races. We had a little bit of everybody mixed in there. Even to the point where we had a lot of people that, that came from South America, they were being confused as Mexicans and they couldn't stand it. The same is true in a civilian capacity working for the government. There's a lot of different races, especially in Washington, DC. You see pretty much a little bit of everything. Now, the one distinction that I have made while working for the government is when you come across a person in the SES, right? So the senior executive service. If you come across somebody that's SES, 70% of the time, roughly speaking, they're probably gonna end up being white. So you do not see a lot of diversity in the very top tier of positions in the federal government. So these new DEI type positions, these diversity job positions, they're not just being targeted at the Pentagon, you will see them in the Navy, and they're being also introduced into the Air Force and other branches. So it had me thinking, how much is actually being invested when it comes to diversity concerns, diversity actions, how much are we spending on that? And I was able to uncover the number $86.5 million. That was the Pentagon's budget proposal last year for diversity and inclusion activities. Of course, this type of progressive or woke ideology it has existed for many years, right? You have two sides of the argument. One side feels like we're not doing enough, that we could do a lot more. And the other side feels like it's wasteful. Like, what are we doing? We're going on the wrong track. We're focusing on the wrong things. And this reminds me of a TikTok video I saw just the other day. It showed elementary students in Russia and in China. And what they were doing is they were disassembling and assembling a weapon system. I believe it was like a rifle. And then by contrast, they showed students 
in the United States and they were learning different pronouns. And they were trying to contrast the two sides to show the difference between our cultures. So the Senator actually demanded that the Secretary of Defense, and if you don't know, that's pretty much the top of the pyramid when it comes to the military. He demanded that he wanted to see every piece of training or any type of activity that troops were exposed to last year in 2022. Now I was in the army from 1999 to 2019. And throughout those 20 years, I do not recall one time where I had diversity or inclusion training. Now the big thing back then was emotional intelligence. So I sat through multiple training sessions of emotional intelligence. But when it comes to diversity, the closest thing that I saw to diversity was probably the EO, which is the equal opportunity. There's actually like one building that you will have on base and you'll have multiple EO representatives there. And then you have also, you have an EO representative in your unit. So when something occurs, like if you're being, um, let's say you're being harassed because of your religion or you're not being treated fairly because of your race, then you can make a complaint and it could be a formal complaint and there would be an investigation. So we did have that, which makes me think, I'm not sure, but maybe the military is going to slowly start adopting and expanding from that idea to include more of a diversity and inclusion equity type mindset. Another thing with these positions, at first I thought these would be 0200 positions because 0200 covers human resources. So this feels like a, a human resource type job, but I found a lot of the positions that focus on diversity, they were actually listed as 0301, which is miscellaneous and administrative program. So I found that odd how they were trying to detach this and put it under the 0300. Now, to be fair, I did see some in the 0200. So it's like a mix right now. If you go on USA Jobs, you'll find half of them under 0200 and the other half are under 0301. Now, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this issue. Like, do you think that this is a good thing? This is the right path to go down? Do you think maybe we should have more DEI type positions or maybe we should have less? Let me know down below. Okay, so if you don't care what type of job you get, you just wanna get a better job then one of the reasons that could be holding you back is the job filter. You gotta set up that job filter. It's gotta be strong. It's gotta be a comprehensive approach. If you wanna know the best way you can set up your job filter on usajobs.gov, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.